Championship. Uh, we're onwards to the second match of the day. We had the first one, Super JJ took it over Kalento. Uh, our yep. next contestants are Ness and Legendaren, who uh, you know are local players. I mean, Ness is a local player, and Legendaren as well. So. Yeah, so Ness has um, qualified and got this far. Uh, yes, uh, last I series he got into second place. Uh, this was where he finished. So a bit of an ongoing occurrence of him performing well at this event, which is good for him. Yeah. UK player, of course. So he's doing really well. He uh, he's performed well. I think he's favoured his priest mostly um, throughout the tournament. He's really liking that deck uh, with the additions. I think there's, he's uh, he's been playing some of the new cards as well. So that's always going to be fun to see. And, uh, and yeah, Legend Iron plays for London Conspiracy. He uh, got, I think his sort of breakout performance, at least this year, was uh, in Gfinity, where he, uh, he got first place. Uh, so yeah, so it's going to be a good match overall. It's going to be a tough one. I think uh, we said earlier it was like 50-50. Yeah, it was hard, hard to call this right. one, right? Yeah. Since we don't have too much, like we don't know the players too much, and that's going to be nice maybe to get a bit more information about how they play. Uh, we've seen Ness play quite a bit yesterday. You know, the Priest is one of the decks that I think went out pretty quick. But the addition of the Curator to the entire class really, you know, helps it round up the card draw without relying on, you know, Northshire Circle. So that gives them a little bit of an edge there. Uh, I kind of like it, honestly. Yeah, and on the flip side there, was, I think Legend Aaron, who played uh, yesterday on stream, he um, he actually 3-0'd with his uh, Rogue as well. So the Rogue, you know, whether he's going to start with that lineup, because I think Ness's uh, lineup overall is pretty weak versus Rogue. I think he's playing Priest, Druid, and Paladin, which I believe is mid-range Paladin. So, so um, yeah. you know, he's going to, I think he's going to have a rough rough go of it this time. Especially the Priest and the Paladin, right? The yeah. Rogue. Yep. Uh, sorry, the Druid. Um, I'm not sure if he's playing with the Harrison Jones, but... It, the Druid has always, an okay has always yeah. a chance to win against any kind of deck because of the fact that he can just innervate anything that can be just uh, abusing the fact that it's earlier in the game. So I think the Druid is his best, best uh, deck in this lineup and his best option to just win the game. And maybe he should start with that and just it's tough in Last Hero Standing, right? Because in oh. Conquest, you're like, yeah, eventually I'm going to have to win with everything, so it doesn't really matter yeah. when yeah. I face them. But when it comes to Last Hero Standing, that pick order is well, very important. I think a lot of this match is going to uh, rely on who picks what first. Right. Because on one side, Ness could be like, well, Druid's my best bet versus Rogue, 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, so it's like, I want my Druid. I want to pick Druid into Rogue, no matter what. So then it's like, do I wait for him to play Rogue, pick something else to start off with? Or is Legend Iron going to pick Rogue first and just try and 3-0 him? But he's it's kind of fine it. to pick uh, Druid as an opener anyway, right? Because of last year's standing, if you win with it, it's fine. You can keep going. Yeah, but if he loses it with against... it, he can't snipe the Rogue. Sure. That's the problem. Oh. Like, he needs to hold on but to it can, to try and snipe. You can sweep snipe. with it, right, technically? I think going for the sweep with Druid might probably be the best option. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's like the mind games that your opponent might think that you will go with the druid, so he won't start with the rogue, but then you th you think that, well, your opponent will predict that, so we'll actually not open with druid, so I should yeah. open with rogue, and then it actually druid. So it's like... Yeah. <laughs> you can take the mind games too far, that's the and problem one, one as well. One step too far, and suddenly you're back to where you were. Yeah. That being said, we'll watch a quick video with the players before we move on to seeing them play their match, so enjoy that. My name is Anton Danielsson. Uh, I go by the name of Legendaren. Uh, I play for London Conspiracy and uh, I'm from Sweden. I think I played good overall. Uh, I've been here for two days now. And I've only lost one game. Uh, now that I'm in the top 16, I feel uh, good about it. And uh, that was my goal. The last game was the most challenging since uh, I had to win it. Otherwise, I would go into a tiebreaker. My approach for tomorrow is the same as the last few games I've had a lot of success with my lineup, so I think it's pretty good. I hope I to get a good night's sleep and then just come back and win it. This is my second time at Insomnia. The first one I went to, I came second. So, uh, yeah, I, I thought, well, I might come back and try again if I can come second. Of course, this tournament's uh, a lot bigger and there's invited players. But I thought, yeah, I'll try again. Sure, maybe I'll make it. And going for first place this time, but second place will still be pretty good. I got quite lucky in a few games, but that's Hearthstone, I guess. There were a few times in some matches where I thought I was definitely going to lose, and I just had some cards or top decks which saved me completely. I've got a few decks which I think the viewers might enjoy. If they saw me on stream yesterday, they'll know that one of my decks is quite creative, and it's not very commonly played. Yeah, so uh, he was probably referring to his Priest deck. He was saying, you know, my, I have one of my decks that's pretty creative and not commonly played. I'm assuming that's Priest. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's got to be, I right? So. I really hope he plays Rafam. 
in his deck. Cursor, I mean, the, I mean, Arc T for fun, that is. The, like, it, it's a threat that looks like it's joining kind of Isera and Nefarian mm -hmm. on the bench of big nine drops that give you like a crazy potential finisher or card advantage. Uh, but in Priest, I mean, you want to play it, but it's also difficult sometimes to find something to combine it with, right? Like if Fofan gets dealt combined with. with most most of the time, you'll just take the uh, fill the, the board with the free freeze, <laughs> yeah, right? Sure. Because then you play just patron warrior. Well, that's the yeah. power of the card, isn't it? You just t you pick whatever you need at that situation. If you yeah. have the board, then yeah, you take the plus ten plus ten and just uh, burst next turn. Right. But if you don't, then yeah, you can you can just make the board instead of three threes. Yeah. So. Or you just take avenging wrath. Yeah, a better or one. Or ten mana. Uh, yeah, like you get two more missiles. Is that no? It's four more. That is for. Four more mana, basically. Yeah. So you're paying. It's like, not the best deal. Right. It's a pretty bad deal, but sometimes if there's nothing on board and you just need the ten, you don't have a minion. You can't yeah, wait for the board to be flooded. Right? Fire blast. <laughs> uh, like it kind of it kind of works in some cases. So it's a uh, it's a nice uh, it's a nice touch. So I mean I don't exactly know all the lineup from uh, like uh, Legendary. Uh, exact like the exact deck. There's a hunter, there. right? Uh, Sagan? I think so. I know. I just saw a lot of rogue. Here we go. Here we go. So we have rogue rogue druid warlock. He was against hunter. Yes, visual. Yeah, visual yeah, yeah, yeah. plays the hunter. Yeah, runs the deck. That's right. So, rogue druid warlock for legendary and Ness with the, the druid paladin priest. So there are quite a few differences here. Yeah, the, the crazy deck Ness might have been talking about could have been dragon druid. We won't know. Dragon druid. Could oh, find out. Come on, I, I can't believe this is true, especially if <laughs> Brand Dornas's aspirant blackwing corruptor. Actually, well, what Brand, Brand Dornasis could be fun at some stage, but. <laughs> Uh, the turn, turn <laughs> okay. five ramp, right? Okay. It, um, it's bad when, when uh, the, the Maligos Hunter player uh, of the three of us is not convinced by a deck. Uh, I, <laughs> That's I when play, you know it's yeah, bad. I know, man. <laughs> I mean, usually, Bren Bronsbit is not that great when your deck has like the choose ones. The choose ones. Choose, choose yeah. ones, but they're not battle cries, Which is right? why you replace them <laughs> with battle cries. So you play with the Grove? No, I want it's double silence and owls. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. double spellbreaker. <laughs> Well, it has almost the same stats. Right, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dies to three twos, though. So, looks like we're going to be seeing the Paladin from Ness versus the Warlock from Legendary. And the lineups are reversed here, uh, I believe, on the on the side. Yeah, that's um, Legendary playing, is playing Rogue, right? So, we'll probably see that switch in a few seconds. Right. Uh, but Legendary is playing Reno Warlock, right? It looks like so. Uh, or, or, or is no, it the Malagos? I think version? it's Malagos actually. Okay. I think it is. Don't. If that's true, on that one, but if that's true, the, the Malagos version is way better against Paladins because of the double Hellfire yeah, and yeah. Shadow, Shadow Flame. Flame. And that was a Hellfire. It's one of the MVP cards here in this matchup. So if you don't have it in your hand, you shall tap as soon as possible to get it. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you can make a comeback. And the double Drake pretty much signifies it's not Malilock. Uh, well. Would you? No. Uh, no sorry, not not, not not Mali Lock. I mean, mean, not Reno Lock. Oh, sure, uh, yeah. It's meant. not, it's not Reno Lock, but it is, in fact, yeah. Mali Lock. The two yeah. dragons signify it's not a dragon deck. Yeah, that was that was. Silly. And then this big blue dude, you know, for nine mana there. <laughs> oh, it, yeah. It that's looks a, like someone that's like played Mali Lock. It has Malagos in it. <laughs> yeah. Interesting enough, it's not Malagos on the picture itself. Yep. Yeah, it's Caligos, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like the Kodo Cliff Hoof distinction <laughs> on the <laughs> stampeding Cliff Hoof. I can't really remember in, in World of Warcraft this if Malagos was even a card. I'll we'll have to check that. I do not remember it being one. I know there was a lot of blue Dragonflight cards, but yeah. no Malagos yeah. himself, if I recall. Oh, I'm the odd one out, never playing that game. <laughs> Feels bad. And a Keeper Overlord will bring some value in the beginning of the game. Look at that. Yeah. Will we see the implosion so early on? Or do you just go it's for Twilight, the Twilight Drake? Fine. Well, Drake up too, but still big. Even though the hand's not like super full, it's still a big body and can deal with both of these minions if has to. Yep, there's a Twilight Drake being played on board. So four seven minion, there's nothing to scoff on, and especially that it takes down both minions are not. It's not being traded. But oh god, that champion, champion, champion is the card yep. that Ness was looking for. Let's see, Kings was probably good enough if he runs that card at all. But the two server champion means that he can get recurring value from his. Uh, his weapon in the future turn, which helps him get tempo even further. So a very solid outcome for him here. I really like how he went for the Imgang boss instead of killing the one eye Drake as soon as possible. Because you will kill it next turn anyway, and you didn't lose any of your board yeah. at all in this situation. 
Yeah, and it's like you just have to imagine that Legend Iron's going to make a trade for you with the Twilight Drake as well. So mm -hmm. you may as well get the value and, like you said, save the board. The implosion is going to come down and hit for three, um, which is pretty reasonable, actually. Consecrate is available. But would you use it? Yeah. I think Shredder, Shredder's I mean, you kind of all right, right? By the way, the... the I was thinking about... Um, the Justicar would be... Would there be a place to play... Uh, 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 actually, a time slot to play it against the um, the Malagos Warlock? And I find it hard, it's hard, uh, harder to believe that that would be a good point. Yeah, Blackwing Corruptor just Justicar. punishes you too much, right? Yeah. Like, Hellfire, Dark Bombs, right. Blackwing Corruptor, there are so many options. Yeah. Speaking of which... Uh, tap into Twilight Drake seems like a very decent option. Yeah, you definitely want the Corruptor to actually do something a little bit more than just hitting face for three. Get it's good with Bran, late game, but otherwise uh, useless. Yeah, and the thing is, because he has Malagos in hand, like he doesn't have to worry about keeping hold of a dragon to proc yep. the Corruptor. That, you know, when Malagos comes down, you imagine the game's probably going to be over. So he has the dragon synergy like throughout the deck now. Well, just a car looks like it's going to find uh, a slot to be played in. The thing is, right now, if the Corruptor is played, right now Ness doesn't have any quality to go with that Consecration, right? And the problem is, even though he, he plans to do the Quartermaster to play next turn just with two minions from right. the Hero Power, he is that so, so much losing tempo and damage because of that Black and Corruptor. Because yeah. that is nine damage next turn. That is very. That is a, what we we uh, we could say is probably a very hopeful and optimistic Justicar is what this was. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it didn't likely do anything considering you know there's Quartermasters in that deck. Uh, I would rather see the Sylvanas being just played on board than the Justicar. Probably yeah. Just because it forces the opponent to start weakening his own dragon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, exactly. And maybe then he's you know he's, if he calls Sylvanas then it's fine, because you just get the Drake. And if he doesn't trade, then you're just buying time. And then Justicar does even more work. Yeah, and the benefit Legend Iron has in this matchup as a whole is he can do exactly what he wants to do as a, as a Mali Lock and just freely tap, because there's no burst coming from mid-range Paladin. Like, he's on 16, and he can still probably make another two, three taps before he feels like there's any real danger, whilst keeping the board clear of Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long and until we start seeing combo decks from Valley? A long, long time. Because, you know, I, the Murloc deck, that'll work. I'm talking about Blessing of Might, <laughs> Faceless. Oh, no, combos. no. <laughs> Never. Arcane Golem, Double Blessing, Faceless. Just 20. So there's already Soulfire in the hand of Legendarn, and uh, here's a Dark Moon too. What he needs is an Emperor to play it as soon as possible, otherwise he has an access to 9 damage bursts. Yeah. On turn 10, which is two turns away, which is not bad because you can deal nine damage right now. Uh, or you can go for the implosion to increase the chances of stealing a 1 1 instead of the 4 8. But then you uh, have kind to of like heal bot. Yeah, like, like heal bot, heal bot, zombie chow. Like oh, okay. tap, yeah. you tap, you heal bot, yeah. your zombie chow, he steals probably two face. worthless minions. Right? Oh. Ooh, well, that kind oh. of changes the plan. Do you tap bomb now? Tap, tap and dark bomb seems like the best yeah. option now. I think you definitely want to tap because you want Thorison, but the problem is dark bomb now removes one of his burst cards. He does have soul fire. Um, oh, he's just going to trade. OK. Whatever happens, he can kill what comes out. Well, that's a dark bomb target if he ever wants one, but he's going to keep it for face. I'm really Probably. surprised that he played the imp gang boss yeah. after his opponent got the full free minion. Would you not value the tap higher? I would value the tap into dark bomb the, the, the Sylvanas more than anything yeah. else. I think uh, it comes down to certain like discomfort in tournament play sometimes, where you're starting to you fear that this Sylvanas just turns the game around out of nowhere, uh, but we, we pretty much know that th this just can't happen, right? Like, it, it's just that it's a card that you, you're used to just playing around way too much. Yeah. I just think, like, if it, it, you kind of, with that hand, want to draw into Emperor as quickly as possible, because if you draw into Emperor, you just win, right? Yeah, you just, like you just win. Throw, throw oh. spells to face and win. Yeah. So um, the cool. tap was really valuable every single turn, and I didn't even mind tap healbot the previous turn and just go face and let let the Sylvanas do what he wants to do. Yeah, like don't even play the Chow. Like you yeah, can yeah, feed yeah. them a Chow with Sylvanas, but don't even it doesn't even matter yeah. at that stage. You could also if you play Chow and it doesn't steal it, you can kill Chow to then heal past your burst. Right. Whereas now you're forcing either a healbot or a lay on hands. Right. So this looks like it's just going to be hit Hellfire Peddler. He's got 15 damage right now, right? So four, five, six, seven. Yeah, he's one minute off of killing his opponent if he picks up another Soulfire or a PO 
from the Dark Peddler. But either way, I think the Hellfire will be coming down. Uh, Whether it's Hellfire good, or Heal right? Blood, right? Eight damage to the face. Yeah. Then you can just play Peddler. Heal Blood is like. It's also, that if you do Hellfire now and then play, say, even just Peddler Heal Bot next turn, he can Malago Soulfire. And then with the minions on board, should you be can enough finish to him push off, through. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, this is just Soulfire's lethal with Malagos, right? Yeah. And that, it's it, nine it damage, is, right? It is, yeah. but um, Ness will have to play the heal bot in this situation. Because yeah, I don't think there's a world in which you right. don't drop heal bot. Here. Yeah, he's, he has to recognize the threat. And I think it, what's interesting to now is that he knows on turn 10 he can go hero power, muster, quartermaster. Yeah. He's thinking, well, if I can just stay alive one turn and get the tempo, then I might be able to win uh, by just establishing a crazy board if we don't see another Hellfire. And I like the choice he made here of playing the Murloc Knight. Ooh, how much damage is that? 4, 6, 8, 11 damage. Wow. If you get... So far. You got a Dark Pedal, right? Uh, PO, then you're 2 of lethal. Mm -hmm. But you can still play it somewhat slowly, unless there's a Lay on Hands out of nowhere. I think tapping and uh, seeing what you get mm -hmm. from it is the first step, no matter what. I would play the Dark Peddler first. Oh, Guardian. That's interesting, right. because if you find Burst, you would change maybe your game yeah, plan around that exactly. immediately. If you know what you're getting from the Dark Peddler, it might affect your your game plan. And you want to play the Peddler anyway. Well, well, the biggest Burst cards we've ever seen. Well, yeah. I mean, the Young Dragon Hawk with Abusive looks ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a card I would consider when I don't see 1-1s on the board. You know, you play Young Dragon Hawk here with Twide Guardian, Zombie Chow, and suddenly you have like three minutes on board, and the Young Dragon Hawk represents for free damage. I, I don't think you would like to play the zombie chow in this situation. Sure, you yeah. don't have to, of course. Um, that's a problem. I'm kind of surprised that he didn't take, actually, the um, uh, the young dragon hog, because the Void Walker doesn't do anything. Right, it, like it with dies. the Twilight Guardian, it's double dipping. Like, it's it, it's kind of like, it's superfluous, right? When you already yeah. have the 3-6 with Dawn. Yeah, exactly. So it's. It's an interesting play. Now, we see the uh, Quartermaster play looking very appealing for Ness, uh, just because he wants to get that big threat like on the board right now. And you see the Healbot just killing the Voidwalker, as we talked about. Like, yeah. it doesn't get, it doesn't, it's not protected. It was actually just lost two damage. Uh, sorry, w yeah, yeah, one damage. Is one damage. Lost. No, it's actually two, because he didn't attack with the Voidwalker. Yeah. So it's actually two damage. So next turn you have three, five, seven, nine, and uh, 13, 16, Did he play one of lethal. Instead of quartermaster. Yes. And now you have three, five, seven, and uh, nine. Right? One off, right? Yeah. Another day, another one off. But here, what's cool is because he doesn't have Hellfire, and I say what's cool, not from his perspective, because he doesn't have Hellfire, there's a chance that Nez just goes crazy with a quartermaster. I just want to go back, like that Void Walker. Actually, mattered. Would, right. would have won this. You would have won right now. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Oh well, yeah, that's a good point. It's it was that's a big deal. Crazy. I was surprised. And now he's tapping into. Oh, and that's a very turn. dangerous situation. You gotta be killing those cards. You know, n the problem that he's running into now is if I kill anything. What's crazy here? Oh, though? yeah, actually, he's Has got lethal, right? Yeah, that's it. GG. <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it is, yeah, five plus, yeah, that, that, that. He needs to play the second Twilight Guardian, Wait. but then two two minions are just crashing into that, two into that, and it's four, seven. No, he has lethal right now. You corrupt through the face and you Dark Bomb Soulfire. What? Oh, you're talking about this, sorry. Oh. Well, yeah, he just top decked the lethal. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Hang on. We need to go back. Oh, yeah, because yeah, the abuse had two more as well. Right. If that pedal was four. He and has then, four, five, six, seven, plus seven. another seven. He has oh 14. Oh, God. He, he just... Oh. He just, so I just <laughs> drifted out. It's like <laughs> already counting damage oh, from Paladin. No. And now look and, at that. What the, if the Quartermaster wins the game? The thing you hear as well is Ness pretty much told Legendar and he didn't have Quartermaster because he's seen the Hellfires. He played Shredder instead of Quartermaster in his board full of 1-1s. One so it just gives Legendar and like, oh, well, surely he would have played Quartermaster, but right? Now you have to ask yourself, do I Tyrion or do I Quartermaster? You have to clear the board, so you have to play Quartermaster. Quartermaster, exactly. You can't afford not to, plus you get to kill a zombie child. Yeah, you heal, which yeah. heals you. That's insane. Oh. That's insane. Also, interesting situation that uh, <laughs> he wasn't able to hero power. No. Nope. Because it would fill up the board, and then he wouldn't be able to kill the zombie child. You gotta kill that Chow, mate. All right, there it is. I would not play the zombie Chow. Help yourself and avoid Hellfire being worse 
for you yep. than it is now. Would you play the BGH? Uh, because good. like, what, what's no, no targets, right? Yeah, yeah. What you yeah. gonna BGH? But you played the Chow instead. Okay. Whoa. Oh. So. But how much damage is then on board? If you play Thorsten, you have to dark bomb the zombie chow to, to guarantee your survival, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you would die to another quartermaster if you don't kill the chow. Don't but you have to go for it because you win next turn? Yeah, exactly. But you don't win. If, like, if you play Thorsten and you dark bomb the two, three, you don't win next turn. Yeah, do you not just have to play Thorsten's pass? But Thorsten BGH? Man. But, but then you're dead on board. You're, dead on, you're, you're gonna is die. That? Well, not, not on the board necessarily. Two off. But there's a lot of things that could kill you. Another quartermaster, uh, a true silver, a kings. Maybe it's worth the risk. Yeah, we're well, not expecting kings in mid range, right? Yeah, I mean, it depends what legendary is putting his upon on. But yeah, I think uh, you tend not to see yeah, that card. Even seen in one quartermaster, your opponent only has two cards. Right. Oh, uh, I don't know. As long as he doesn't it's tap. It's just like yeah. other than lay on hands, because again, he probably you got to presume Ness isn't playing double heal bot. Unless top deck lay on hands, then you've just got to assume that this gives you lethal next turn, so. Yeah, and looks like he's gonna get the lethal. Based on what Ness has here, Vitality Totem could change things up. But that's about else? the only I, I don't think there's any, any other drop that will right. save him, right? No, Mana Wraith makes the Malagos cost nine, but it doesn't really help you. Um, a two, two cost card that heals you. Light well, but it's too late. Yeah. Nope. Nope. That's on it. Can't think of one. So it will be the end for Ness. Legendary will feel a little bit relieved, but he did uh, have lethal earlier. If you wanted to pick it up, just didn't uh, spot it. I think it's, he was already probably, looking at the Malagos. It's probably better if he continues this series without, without realizing yeah. he missed lethal, because that will throw you off your game a little. No, bit. no, no. I think he should realize that because then he knows he should count more. Yeah, I suppose it could go both ways, right? Happy Feast of Winter Vale, <laughs> champion. Yeah, that's it. So game number one goes to Legendarian with the Malagos Warlock, which means he's going to get to replay it. Uh, but there is a Priest, you know, to go up against. And there's also a Druid. How do you feel about uh, Malagos Lock against Priest? I think it favors the Malagos Warlock so much. It's not even funny. Like, it's, it's not even funny. Yeah, it's like very Don't similar laugh. to Handlock, right? Okay. Very similar to Handlock, but the fact is that uh, you have so much threats in the deck, you just push them on the board. And then on the downside of uh, playing Malagos Warlock against the Priest is the fact that your in-game bosses can be taken by Cabal Shadow Priest, and that's it. Yeah. Like, you'd have to run into very specific Light Bomb and Tomb Heavy decks to start being, you know, pushed off. And even then, sometimes that's a bit late. You know, Twy Drake, Azure Drake comes out, and then you're starting to curve already in your late game. And uh, the priest really can't do much because unlike giants, you can't shadow or death them no. for the most part. Yep. So Ness is going to lock in the druid, double aspirin into savage raw. Yeah. Okay. This is no this is the kind of hand that either is going to be terrible or amazing depending yeah. on his follow up. And Legend Iron's got double Twilight trait, uh, Twilight Guardian, should I say? That's a good opening. Yeah, hand, that's say. pretty nice. On the coin as well. Do well, you actually want to coin out uh, the gang boss? I, I don't do you think you want to coin out anything here. Yeah, you just wait. Oh, goodness gracious. Would you? Do you not want to coin out the Guardian? Double Aspirant? This is Aspirant. <laughs> Lothar yeah, doesn't yeah. care about Druid Ramp. He wants to tap. I mean, if you can Innervate Emperor on turn four, like, if your Aspirant lives here, you coin out, you Innervate the Emperor, maybe that's just straight up better. And actually, it is, obviously, in yeah. many cases, straight up better than getting the Aspirant out. Yeah, because you're effectively gaining mana anyway mm -hmm. by the reduction in the hand. It's ramping. But yeah. Every play you make here ramps you up. It's going to go for the gang boss. It's because, yeah, I guess because he has mortal coils, right? Yeah, setting up the coil to kill the Aspirant. Play that, but the fact is that if there's a pile to shredder, it's still awkward for you. Yep. And um, the Emperor will just be even more awkward. He could pick up an abusive off the top. That would change the game. Pick up abusive off the top, sacrifice the M-Gang boss, and coil the uh, <laughs> the Emperor. Because then you can start curving your Twilight Guardians into the Druid. Having a two mana Savatrol already so fast in hand mm -hmm. changes the perspective of the of the matchup because you know that you will you you can combo to an eight, so it can be even more aggressive. But what he needs to do is to draw 
Druid of the Claw or Path of the Shadow next turn, or just coin, uh, sorry, um, Wrath into a Thor The cycle, Claw. exactly, yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to see Wrath. Although you normally like to keep Wrath for the three attack, on, in this situation, you do definitely need to cycle a bit more and draw into the uh, the bigger cards. And Legendary in here, not really picking up anything he's looking for, which is a little unfortunate for him. We see Ness, uh, you know, the, the, the reduction he's getting, they're not that impactful in that they're not going to let him play, you know, really good minions, but as long as the Emperor is not dealt with, he's doing whatever he wants with this game. You use the two mana wrath here, right? Most likely. Because Unless the one mana wrath becomes zero mana, and zero mana spells are pretty good. Well, you can also go for Dynasty's Aspirant, Wrath, and, and Hero Power. I think that's what the, that's what I would do in this spot, but... I just you think know, you're, so far, you're so far ahead with Thorison on board. If you, you can like, just keep it, if you can just keep it. You have a great turn five. Yeah. You have an Azure Drake and Rav at the same time. And because of the discount, it doesn't matter whether or not you're ramping. Like you've already, you're, you're already guaranteed that you can play it. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm really, really surprised that he oh, no. is killing. He's going to cycle this is what it means. That means he's cycling the Wrath for an extra card, which looking at the way that he values the Emperor's discount, I think that's in line with his plays. If he doesn't, however, yeah, he wants the, he wants uh, the Drake Wrath next turn, doesn't he? Well, that's that's why you keep the. I don't know. An, uh, how to play, but that that was a little. Uh, I didn't like the trade. That's sacrificing five damage to yeah. a. And you playing a really un, not important minion at all because the abuse of surgeon doesn't change anything in this situation. Yeah. If your opponent has a dog bomb or hellfire, yeah. you're losing the board and five damage along and the, the line. And the thing is as well, if there's a way to beat Malagos, it's to be hyper-aggressive and just win before they can draw yeah. through all their uh, AoEs and through their like bigger minions and the, then maybe eventually Malagos into the combo. Um, you just go hyper-aggressive. And like you said, you've got like a, a one-mana Savage draw. Like. And I love this about Legendary in 10 right now, is that he can play Twilight Guardian followed by the Corruptor because he's got the other dragon. And by the time you know he's guaranteed to be playing the second Twilight Guardian, there's a chance he picks up another dragon to enable that one. So he's going to be able to set up taunts quite effectively over a few turns. Two? Ooh, okay. You, he, he took the 33% chance of getting completely thrown out of the game, but it paid off Yeah. <laughs> in this case. It was not a disaster it could have been. Yep, now he has a pretty nice Corruptor uh, and trade one of the 1-1s one -ones into the... Uh, he has your Drake to clear that up and just leave the Aspirin on board. I feel like just pushing face was fine with every... Like, the, the, the Emperor and the Aspirant should have been dealing damage to that uh, Warlock's face. He would be down to 19 right now. Yep. Uh, the attack's face here. Uh, there's a lot of damage lost in this matchup already and... Uh, Judging by the hand of the druids, okay, it looks and, promising. And even that trade there, like you've just killed the one-one, you've left a one-one on board. Does what are you playing around? That, that extra one. You're, it's dead to dark bomb. It's dead to black and corruptor. It's. Uh, I can tell you right now what it is. It's basically the overly safe plays you make when you're nervous. When you're yeah. nervous, it, it it it's basically what happens very often when you see new players come on to the. Uh, the tournament scene. Just try not to lose, right? Trying like, not that's to the lose. Mindset. That's the thing. I, I need don't to want go to through, lose. and I need not to lose. And sometimes making the play to win need, means that you have to commit lines of play that you're just not comfortable with. Yeah. So there are a few ways of thinking this turn. Like Ancient of Law is the most common and obvious play, but the fact is that the opponent will just trade with the Black and Corruptor makes the Ancient of Law awful. So I wouldn't just mind. Uh, Pile the Shredder, Wrath for free, yeah, hero, hero Power, power yeah. I love that raid, play. And just go phase with the Dancer's Aspirant. You still have a decent minion on the board. And you can and just follow up with the Ancient of Lord to draw later. Yeah, exactly. So It's not like he was uh, want of any other options. He had a, he did have a couple there. This is just a... So it seems like a, a mana efficient play. And uh, you get more cards deep into your deck. But the combo was not helping at all because you, do, you weren't aggressive. I would have maybe... I've seen this play if 
um, Ness was very aggressive in the early game with the Emperor yeah, and with the with the Dynastus Aspirant, but now... He would have had more of a board, right? Yes. So then it's exactly. not just one for one. And we see now the Legend Iron's actually cleared off without using the Corruptor, and suddenly this is uh, one of the other strengths of Maligos lock, where not just about Maligos and burst them down with spells, a lot of the minions are big and like do quite a lot of damage every turn, so if they can just build up and just play sort of more beatdown variant, yeah. which would be more difficult for Legend Iron if he was under more pressure in the he yeah. health wise. Just what well, seems to be the problem in this game is the fact that Ness doesn't really um, can decide who is the beatdown. Yeah. He hasn't determined yet if he's got that role, and he, yeah, now he's, given it, or he's or given it to his opponent now, right? Exactly. He's handed it over. And now he's playing very defensively, which I can understand in this position. But at the same time, it's still not the way you should be playing this matchup in general. Because your opponent will always have the upper hand of having the um, having the red retracted cards like Black and Corruptors and uh, Dark Bombs just to clear the way. And here, the Twilight Guardian has been better than the, those. The problem those is as well, Druid is known to not be able to deal with big boards. Like, yeah. That's just that's actually a part of the class. And um, the longer the game goes on, it just favors the Maligos lock even more because the deck's built around late game yeah, and, and then I, more answers, I, I, I like Druid's that, much though. more mid-range. Uh, and that's one of the things that I think you know, when you see, when you hear a lot of talk about pro Hearthstone players, and I think very often it doesn't come down to the things necessarily that you see uh, when you watch them play because they make the moves sort of naturally and you see them go face, but they don't have the perfect information. And usually, you know, people ask themselves, you know, what would I do in that spot if I were them? But the thing you have to do is actually hide the opponent's hand, yeah, reset yeah, yeah. the game, and then figure out what your move would be. And if you can figure out what your move would be all the way through and it matches, you know, somebody who you're in a good position, does super well, right. then you're good. But very often, because we're casting this from, like, perfect uh, information positions, and viewers are watching that as well, it feels like the decisions are, you know, self-evident. Yeah, yeah. And now you can really see obvious, Ness. But it's going to be obvious, right? Right. To us. But well, we can see Ness here falling to the trap of not making the quote-unquote obvious plays that we've learned to spot as viewers, because he's always afraid. You know, always on the yeah. back foot. He's like, the worst case scenario is X and Y, and I'm going to play around the worst case scenario, not the average, the worst. And, case. and what you really want to do in most games, there are certain decks that don't quite play like this, but you want to be the person who threatens your opponent. You want your opponent to deal with you, not for you to consistently right. just say, okay, well, I, I'm gonna tech in all these answers to things my opponents play. Instead, no, you wanna be the one providing the issues and make your opponent deal with them. Yeah. Um, and that's something we're seeing, uh, obviously the flip side here where Ness is just just super reacting to everything and not actually, I mean, the Warlock's still on 23. Like, it's, yep. it's crazy, like, the amount of chances that Ness had to just push, the Warlock would have had to have dealt with them, especially seeing Emperor so early. For all Legend Iron knew, Emperor was hitting combo twice, right? So he has to be wary of that, and he has to play around that to a certain extent. Well, we're going to hope to see maybe the Priest do a bit better, because against the, you know, we know it's a very lopsided matchup in the favor of the Warlock, as we talked about this. Uh, if Ness can't pick this win, which looks like it's going to be very difficult with the amount of damage on board right now and the fact that there's a Blackwing Corruptor. In order to win this game, how does Ness approach this? Like, is there even a way for him to do so? Do you have to use Drew to the Claw, Savage Roar, Drew to the Claw, Lothab, get stuff on board, top deck combo, and then push for one, you know, one fell swoop of lethal? It's going to be really rough. Um, because of the board state now, there's still so many pick minions on Legend Aaron's side that even this play, uh, the Lothep does lock out obviously all the crazy spell stuff that can happen from the from the Warlock, but he just has enough minions to just push through anyway, it just doesn't matter. The Lothep is really not that important in this situation because the fact is that uh, he can deal with minions and like Druid of the Claw would have been just a, a, a minion that will deal damage this turn. Yeah. And he needs that right away because usually you you of course want to play the minion that is slower but you are in a losing position he's trying to yeah. get the damage in at some point and yeah, it's going to be exactly uh, based on the top deck of probably force of nature at some uh, soon to be state but now the board is basically getting answers card for card yeah and this is the issue like when you p play the defensive play but the defensive play gets cleared up by the board that's already there it's like <laughs> you're still behind after that point well, that's kind of the strength of, uh, of Maligos Warlock, and I think Warlock decks in general, right? The class has access to the card draw that enables them to get, 
you know, those tools consistently so they, keep, they can keep putting on the pressure, which is something that you can't necessarily do as any other class. So that hero power on its own means that the general approach you have to, to take against Warlocks is always similar. When we're talking about mid-range Demon Lock, Malagos Warlock, Handlock, you always kind of take the same uh, line of play with high pressure. It's not even about aggressive minions. They're just right. uh, they're just persistent. Of right, they're just yeah. big. They're just <laughs> yeah. big, fat, and they just keep coming. Yeah, like you can't really do much about it. Well, that's how dragons should work, right? Mm -hmm. They should yeah. be big, Indeed. badass <laughs> minions. <laughs> and it, it it is exactly uh, what they are. I'm My happy that we finally have a, you know viable dragon cards. Yeah. I still remember the time when uh, Twilight Drake was 1-1 one, one, oh. and the battle cry oh, added yeah. buff, buff. plus one attack, plus one health. So. That was actually a viable deck with Rogue and Twilight Drakes. You could play Twilight Drakes everywhere, yeah. almost. And you'd almost, like, worst case scenario, very often, like on turn four, it was like a Yeti. A bit better, but... <laughs> yeah. And this is the same position again. The Druid of the Claw in Taunt, it's, yeah, it, it takes six damage, but it takes six damage from all of the minions that are on the board anyway. And yeah, th that's just pushing the game a little bit Isn't slower. Isn't that lethal? But, 5, 8, uh, 10, 11, 13. No, it's not. 13, seven, well, 17 got, damage, right? He's got the extra damage here, right? Because he's pushing for 3, and he can go for uh, Hellfire for 4, and Soulfire for 4. So he's got lethal. Oh, wait, it is lethal. Well, he has yeah, to start with Hellfire for 4. Yeah. Yeah, but Hellfire kills the Azure Drake, but it's still on 4, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's lethal. Yep. All right, so Legendary with the Malagos Warlock taking another game, and Ness is going to have to go for his Priest, which is the last deck he's got. And maybe, just maybe, it's able to upset what we expect of it. But with a rogue lined up, a druid lined up behind the Malagos Warlock, he's got three uphill battles to fight, yep. one after the other. Yep, and the priest is going to be a bit tough, I think, as well, because it falls into the trap of, um, yeah, the priest can heal, so you can sort of play around some burst, but right. uh, light bomb against things like Twilight Guardians don't didn't really do much. Um, and Tomb's going to be important. But the minions are so beefy that they can just push through a lot of damage. And what do you actually entomb in this deck? There's like there's Malagos, which is going to be too little, too late. You'd imagine by that point. Um, you could entomb honestly anything that you can't kill with a Shadowward Pain or Death yeah. is usually what you're going for, yeah. right? But even uh, that feels really slow, right? You've removed what just sure. the one for one. But that's the issue with Entomb, that it's a good card in the control matchups, but it's still six mana. Like that's a lot yeah. of your turn. It, it didn't help like, take uh, a minion away. It didn't help Priest deal with mid range. Because priests, like they have this thing where they're very, they can be both good against control and aggro at the same time, but then mid range There's roll all over there. Yeah. There's a gap in the middle, and Light Bomb addressed that for a while, but now it's like, yeah, we have Excavated Evil, we have Holy Nova, we can start setting up, you know, board clears over two, three turns and escalate our plays, but it still leaves you with that weird four attack and high health minion gap. Like Drew the Claw, Twilight Drake. Uh, Twilight Guardian, even just like a three attack. Yes, you might play Pain, but if you don't have them, then what happens is like the mid range decks are still having that edge. Yep. I can see a Cleric come down and coin into Powered Shield just to make it survive uh, a little bit longer versus the Chow. Curator. And safe versus um, uh, Mortal Coil. Well, this looks like a very tough nut to crack for the Priest. Both yep. Twilight Drake. And Twilight Guard and Black and Corruptor, so like the MVPs of the of the deck already in hand will make it very, very difficult for the priest. But he does have card draw, and usually one of the big things you have to get to compete with a warlock at any point is to get the card draw going as a priest. It's very tough sometimes, but when you start being able to keep up with his draw, then you know you're able to keep your own options open, get a better Light Bomb, because you know there's a Holy Nova on the back end to finish the minions off. When you have all these tools already lined up, suddenly it's not nearly as difficult. Well, imagine Maligos. Yeah. Imagine Maligos right now. That will be a huge deal, because those both mortal coils... Well, they will have to be used to kill this, right? Or no, I don't think so. You just, just play, play you just play Twilight Guardian and Nexon Dark Bomb that. Oh, man. Oh man. Would you Twilight Guardian over Drake? I yeah. would Drake, but. Yeah, I would Ga Twilight Drake. I'm yeah, because sure. then you can. He's playing around Divine Spirit, Inner Fire. <laughs> I see what it is. 
I, have I just don't it. know why you play Guardian. Well, the only reason why you play Guardian here is just to have the additional two damage from the zombie Chow next turn. Next turn on the yeah, true. So you can Dark Bomb the Death Lord and still kill it. So you don't need to use that Mortal Coils. So you can have an insane turn with the Mortal Coils after the Malagos will be, in, will be yeah, that's clearly dropped the play. from the Death Lord. I like that. You know, six damage okay. coils that draw a card. One mana, deal six damage to a minion, draw a card. Sounds pretty really balanced. Uh, the options, uh, Pilot Sky Golem. Well, uh, the Golem is not bad. Eh? Anubis of Sen Sentinel, if I can say that right, and a Leper Gnome. So very different different end to the mana curve there. Yeah, Sky Golem is obviously kind of the go-to pick, unless you want to play the Anubiseth on turn five, which, even though it's you know typically considered a bad uh, a bad card, it's got its uses in some cases. It's just difficult to pick over something as standardly good as the uh, Sky Golem. Well, shall we see the Malagos, Lothar? That was the question. Do you use Dark Bomb or do you use Black and Corruptor? I think you use the Corruptor, right? Nah, if you use the Corruptor, then you need to sacrifice Zombie Chow. If you use the uh, Dark Bomb, you use Mortal Coil instead. And you can tap still. But the problem is, like, do you not want the second body? Because you return away from Light Bomb. The odds of, like, Malagos and Emperor coming out are actually fairly high, considering the amount of minions he's got in hand. Mm -hmm. we, we've seen one Drake, two Twilight Guardians, one Corruptor, two him gang bosses, like one Zombie Chow. Like the, the, the small stuff, even if you get like a, an Azure Drake, it's still kind of okay. If you get a two damage coil. Yeah. So he goes for the Corruptor. And right. let's see. Amper would be pretty much insane. Yep. Oh, oh, the worst. It had to be the worst. That's possibly the worst. One, yeah. It's got to be the worst. Yeah, it is the worst. You confirm? I'm just thinking, yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> well, Holy Nova is tempting, but you can kill the Black and Corruptor, just leave the anti kill board on board. Don't, you, you, you don't really care about it. What if you don't kill the Corruptor and you use the Northshire to kill the, uh, the heal bot afterwards? Are you attacking to the Guardian with your Northshire? And then you Nova, and then you trade the one two away into the the heal bot. So let's you use Wild Pyro afterwards to finish it off, and you do draw a card in the end. Is he going for the uh, Death Lord? If he's going for Death Lord, then he's That's escalating scary. his clears over multiple turns, which makes a lot of sense. To, to, like it's it's consistent with his game plan, is what I mean. Yeah, it's just if you play Death Lord, well, you've just seen heal bot, uh, which is the bad one. Is he going to just straight up kill it? That's the problem. He just can kill the Death Lord next turn. Yeah, hundred percent. I yeah. That's what I would be worried about versus Manly Lock. <laughs> That's a weird. At least in the really previous weird. turn. Yeah, the previous turn. Well, he didn't have the damage on board. Right. So you're like, okay, he might not yeah. have it, and then you just heal, 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 draw the game out. But and the minions don't even die. Well, they. It, it sets up for set Holy Nova. Holy Nova but yeah. He sets up the like Death Lord. What it does here is that it sets up a Nova that's amazing, no matter what. So what you're hoping to not see is Malagos or Emperor out of the Death Lord. And it's as likely, you know, to be uh, the, the card that comes out of another one. Ooh, well, right. almost, almost <laughs> Malagos. Mini Malagos. But the double Mortal Coils are just yep. insanely good right now. Yeah. Mini Ghost. Pretty good card. And the problem is wow. next turn, like, yeah, the Holy Nova's there, but the Drake's not going to die and Holy Nova's your whole turn. So then the Warlock gets another turn to just drop down minions after an AoE clear. Does he have the Light Bomb? Because the Light Bomb, in a case like this, uh, would at least salvage a decent chunk of health. Yeah. yeah it's still Twilight Guardian instead of Twilight Drake. Why is that? In this situation when you don't need the Town at all. And there's no Shrink Cabal possibility. Yeah, ever. and you will tap next turn to get out of Dragons. Hmm. It's a very, very peculiar situation. Do you play Sylvanas on this board, or do you have to Nova just to stall? Like, Nova's necessary, but you're still dealing with another wave of minion on seven. I think it has to be Sylvanas. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Because no, what does, like... Yeah, Nova saves damage this turn, but it does nothing else. And that yeah. was my, you know, that's my issue with it, really. Like, you can't set up anything else. Whereas at least Sylvanas has to be answered in some respect. Yeah. Only Nova does uh, in the town anyway, but uh, this doesn't necessarily help him building up the board because it, it will get just get refilled yeah and you will have you will face the same problem so sylvanas has to be played after that that's a good thing he didn't play it in this exact case there was an owl but it might he have still not traded right? with some minions though sure. it would have done like a part of the holy nova's work it would he have probably a, would have one put for one with the corruptor into yeah. it yeah yeah 
But the issue now is as well, like in the, that situation, you can't presume like the Warlock won't draw into minions to play. Because, okay. You can just, certainly just, hope. Yeah, just, just because the Warlock's hand is big anyway, and he has live tap, so the odds of him drawing into minions to refill the board, he really just needs a light bomb. That That is a card. <laughs> I'm really yeah, surprised by Legendary and that he played in, in the gang boss. In, with Cabal? I, I thought that he would just not play those cards until he wins the game. Or, yeah. or at least play like Peddler. Yeah, Peddler. And then just let that get stolen. That, oh, man. It, and he could have stolen. tapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really weird. So Nevs here is going to try to extract the maximum amount of value he can out of that uh, Arcanai. He plays it, tries to incentivize trades from Legendaren, right? Which he then finishes off all the minions that are damaged with the Life Bomb mm -hmm. at a nearby point. But look at the amount of damage right now that Legendary is packing. He's got nine in hand from just the minions and the spells. And he's already got another nine on board, so he's got 18. Yeah. He's missing just a tiny bit to get the lethal. And if he doesn't kill the Arcanai, the priest can't heal. So I'm is that worth sure a Sure, if he wants to kill the Elf and I. Yeah, he's scared of circle, right? But what he has to do is to tap almost every single turn, and uh, this is something he wasn't doing for a long time. Oh, Ooh, angry chicken. Woo. Yeah, I mean, technically, I guess he could have tapped into lethal, right? If he got the other soul fire. What does the angry chicken cross the board? Uh, cross the road? Cross the board. <laughs> Why did it cross the board? Uh, Cabal Shadow Priest? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm really surprised by those lines of play. I mean, uh, if you leave two mana here, so you just want to tap anyway. Why not tap straight away? Yeah, well, why not just tap instantly? What? Because he needs to squeeze that bomb in. Oh, come on. And now, now, if the Twilight Guardian goes down to one health, and it does, Light Bomb! We'll get an amazing clear. It's not going to kill the Gang boss, it's not going to kill the Drake, but it will not spawn. Imps from the gang boss. Do you steal the imp gang boss instead? I I can't imagine you would. This is this is way too risky because you can steal it afterwards. The light bomb will not kill it. You still That's get true. it on the following turn. I really can't understand. Do you? Lothar Thanks. is a confused star right now. <laughs> yes, yeah, because you know your your opponent is packing light bomb. He's packing holy novas with Valens chosen. He's packing so much answers to what he just did on board and you don't even spawn a 1-1 from the imp gang boss well let's see if legendary can pick up uh, the emperor that he's going to need well he does pick it up so for malagos he would have been already playing that emperor two turns before because he missed two taps yeah, he would have tapped yeah and he would have the dark bomb in hand and he would have used abuse of surgeon instead of using the dark bomb so he had so much options uh, in the previous few turns, when he just opted to play minions into Light Bomb and trade with really unfavorable. And now, he, and now he just like has to tap, right? Because you need to tap into better cards than this to reduce down to yeah, He's just played Okay, he's played in the damn boss. Uh, so he doesn't mind getting Light Bomb again, is what he's sending as a message. The thing is, right now, if Nash picks up Shadow with Death, I think he's in a great spot. The problem is, you just. Don't, you are not playing into the combo, right? And I mean, look, the combo is not even that important, but you, you need the, you well, need be, the to card. To be fair, he has lethal, lethal, right? Yeah, he does have it, right? He does have the, the soul fire, the abuse. Maybe he just didn't care. He does find the lethal anyway, uh, but things could have been different, right? If there had been Kabal Shadow were Death, then suddenly lethal is not there anymore. Yep. Because you do remove exactly. the five damage from the uh, the Emperor off the board. The second... I think uh, he might have been, because there was no, there was like two overkill. I guess he would have still died by a tiny margin, but it was second light bomb was also a problem. True, absolutely. And you you're facing a control priest, so you can guess he, he might be playing in tomb. Yeah, he might be playing the second light bomb, or just one light bomb and one in tomb. Very um, risky. Weird. But he does take weird a trio either way. Right? Yeah, well, he yeah. was very uh, uh, um, the matchup was favoring the warlock by a lot. Yeah. yeah. So even though his decisions were kind of shaky. Uh, you just they took it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and again, like the lineups were just like just really not favored towards Ness. We saw how powerful the wallet was. He Legendary didn't even need to play the rogue, and the rogue would have probably done a very similar job, at least to the priest in the last match or to the uh, the paladin earlier right. on. So just the the lineup getting shut down pretty hard there, and that's what's difficult with them, um, especially last hero standing, uh, in this format with the variety of decks there are now. It's like you can't build something that's, that's going to be strong against everything. Yeah. You need like an ultra strong meta call to be able to uh, 
yeah, build a, a lineup that's going to survive versus most things, never mind everything. Yeah, maybe yep. uh, the team analysts have uh, a bigger role than they ever had, right? <laughs> As a result of that. So. Yeah, the, I mean, this is something that uh, people are usually um, just ignore when it comes to metagame calls, because they think that if there's like one dominant deck, that's really bad for the metagame. It's actually healthy for the meta metagame to have dominant tier list, that you have two or one just really strong deck, because he he is a um, a guide to what you have to, to yeah, do. Yeah, like with the top decks. the top few like if there's two to three top decks then you know where you're supposed to be headed yeah. when you deck build, right? Like in the case of Patreon for instance, like it's a very unique case because everything was kind of warped around it. Uh, but it was like unarguably a guide. Like there's no question. It was obvious that it helped you as a deck builder, you know, pick up your decks or pick the decks you wanted to play. Uh, and now with the whole, you know, the, the metagame in flux with League of Explorers, it's tough. Like coming into a tournament so early after the release of The Last Wing, it's like, well, what do I really want to play? And so you see Kranich with at least Starseeker and Patron. Uh, and you see Finley pretty much everywhere. Uh, so it's just nice to see like all the, the changes that people have made, but no guides yet. Yep, that's true. Yeah. But so, that was the second uh, quarter. Uh, we'll be uh, quarter taking a final, break, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, we'll be taking a short break, guys, before we move on to the next match. It's going to be the third match of the day. We'll be back after the break. Stay tuned.